Hi, I'm David Levin, and this is Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes stories and anecdotes of your favorite TV shows from the people who were there. Today, Broadway actor, singer, entertainer Hal Linden, best known as TV's Barney Miller. In this archival interview, Hal opened up talking about his Broadway experiences, doing the Rothschilds, how he met Danny Arnold, who talked him into doing Barney Miller. You'll learn why the Barney Miller pilot originally did not sell. He talked about Danny Arnold's vision for the series and for Barney himself. Before we start, take a moment to subscribe and ring the little bell icon so you'll be notified every time we upload. And now, here's the great Hal Linden. Well, I, you know, I'll tell you something. Uh, I've opened on Broadway many, many, many times. I always say I've never gone to an opening night party where they had rave reviews. It was always mixed at best. It's always been a downer. Uh, even the Rothschilds was not a, didn't get great reviews. And uh, this is the best reviews I think we've ever gotten in an really? opening of a show, yeah. That's David, amazing. Yeah. just in the interest of preserving the uh, eyeline, yes. move a little bit closer to yeah, you can How's this? Good. Okay. Should help you out. Just, oh, that's, is that better? You can even move closer. Where do you want me? Is this all right? You should be good right there. All right. Okay. Perfect. That's okay, okay by you, sir? Okay. You good? Perfect. Yeah, okay. Excellent. Thank you, guys. So let's talk a little bit about your, your, your TV career. You've had a little bit of a career, huh? A bit of a career, yes. Um, how did Barney Miller start to happen? Barney Miller is a, is a, is a great lesson for actors. Uh, because it was not the result of an agent finding the property or a manager or even a producer coming to you with the property. It was a, it was a result of, in a sense, serendipity. I was on Broadway playing in the Rothschilds and Danny Arnold, who had created, or who hadn't yet created Barney Miller, happened to be in the audience, not by design, he later told me he was in town shooting a, a, a feature film that he had written, or director, some other di a director was directing it, and they were, his family had come into town for the holidays, and he was so busy with the picture, he didn't have time for his children, and finally the director said, look, we're moving from one location to another, we're not going to be doing anything today, Take, go with your kids. They got into a limo, where the, where the kids were every day somewhere else, send them to a Nick game, send them to somewhere, keep them busy. And that afternoon they were going to see the Rothschilds. And he sat down with his kids and saw the Rothschilds. So the lesson is never dog it. <laughs> you never know who's out there. He didn't come backstage. He didn't say hello. I never saw the man till maybe, what was it, about a year and a half later. Had you ever met him? There was never met him until uh, I was in California doing, I don't recall what, and uh, I was about to get on a plane going back to New York. He said, uh, we have a luncheon date, uh, make a later plane. And I met Danny Arnold and he l outlined his idea for a, a situation comedy mm -hmm. and uh, sounded good. And after, as we were leaving, I turned to my manager. I said, who is this guy? Can he do what he says? And he gave me his background, which was Impressive to me, it was good stuff. Uh, having come off, just come off uh, the Rothschilds, I had a choice of, I think, three or four pilots in those years. And uh, that was the one that was live in front of an audience. And I thought, well, you know, I have the most experience in front of an audience, so we took a, a shot with it. Do you remember what you turned down? I don't. I'm sorry. That's I don't. okay. <laughs> I don't think they ever came to fruition, so I luckily picked the right one. Actually, the interest, well, the, the rest of the story is that pilot didn't sell. The first pilot of Barney Miller was not sold. It was shown in August as part of the ABC Comedy Theater, you know. Mm -hmm. But then uh, Danny didn't give up on it, and he got ABC to make two more episodes, uh, which is was another crossroads in my life because I had a Broadway show that I was supposed to do that year. 
and I had to decide, am I going to go back and do two episodes of a dead pilot, or am I going to do a Broadway show? And uh, it came down to the last second, people waiting for me to make my mind up, and I kind of cavalierly said, well, we've done Broadway, let's try television. It was that cavalier. The first couple of episodes were, were a different format than what the show evolved into. And I'm not just talking about the live audience, but also, wasn't there a family was oriented? Could you talk about that? The original pilot was called The Life and Times of Barney Miller. And it was half at home and half in the precinct. Uh, probably one of the reasons it was turned down. Uh, they loved the precinct part. But at home, it was Father Knows Best or any other sitcom at home, you know. Mm -hmm. How many times can you have a problem with uh, a daughter going out on a date, you know what I mean? Uh, it's been done by everybody <laughs> and very well. So um, that was the, uh, I guess, how he got him to do two more. He said, we're just going to concentrate on the uh, precinct. Mm -hmm and make it purely that. And that's, that's, um, that's what happened. We, ended, we, we still had a family, but they kind of came to visit occasionally and eventually disappeared somewhere, you know. Poor Barney lost his family. Every so often, you know, on a, on a, on a TV show, a character just sort of like disappears from everywhere. Yeah, well, if you watch Happy Days, the older brother disappeared into the ether. That's what happens. Uh, I had a wonderful wife, Barbara Barry, was my wife the first season. She's a great actress. And uh, uh, the second season, they tried to give her a career. They made her a social worker. And uh, for about two episodes, she would come and tell me what she was doing as a social worker. And then it was, it became obvious that it was, and Barbara said, hey, why don't I just go home? <laughs> and that was it. And I never had a wife after that. The evolution, the, sh the show evolves all the time. Shows do. That's what happens. You know, it's a creative process. None of us are geniuses off the top, although Danny Arnold came close. How so? Because his concept of what this show should be uh, was far more defined and far finer than my concept, for instance. When we started, we were like every other sitcom. They give us a script, we go into rehearsal, and all these wonderful comedic actors would come up with wonderful pieces of business and great ideas. Hey, if I say this and he says that, it'd be funny. And you know, you would get creative and then Danny would go. And all the shtick that we had come up with we realized eventually, it took us a while, I must say, in the beginning it was like, you don't think it's funny, you know? <laughs> but after a while you realized, that's not the, what we were doing. His bottom line was, would you come for help to a police officer who does that? if you're going to be a comic police officer. This was not Car 54, Where Are You? And we all came here with the expectation of being funny characters and all that. Eventually, I mean, I realized that my function, for instance, was to be the audience's eye. I had to be straight as an arrow. I, I was the only guy who didn't, didn't uh, chew on the... Uh, 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 hash brownies in that great episode. Yeah. And I, after when we were doing it, I said, don't I get to do it? Everybody else had their aria of how they would be if they had, you know, ingested hash brownies. And Barney, he said, how's the audience going to know who's high and who's not if there's not one guy to hold center? Mm -hmm. And that was my function. And you realize it very quickly and you can make, you know, listen, doesn't sound very exciting, but I, I made a career on it. That's it for now. In part two of my conversation with Hal Linden, he'll talk about the Barney Miller moments that have stayed with him, why he respects Donny, Danny Arnold and what the show gained from that, why they ended up working without a studio audience, and how cops responded to the show. Also, how they dealt with the death of actor Jack Sue. Till then, what's your favorite Barney Miller episode? Let us know in the comments. I read every single one, and while you're at it, don't forget to contribute to my Patreon campaign. It'll help us do even more 
of these Pop Goes to Culture episodes. I'm David Levin. Thanks for watching.